reporting live from my bedroom. And I'm Josh Porter reporting live from my bedroom. And you're watching GB24. Hello and welcome. My name is Josh. Yes, and I'm Eden, and together we are Game Boys Comedy. That's right, and we're also brothers as well as your hosts for the Game Boys Improvised Variety Show live from lockdown. Now, we're not live now, but we were back when this show was originally performed at Melbourne Fringe in 2020, November, during the height of uh, stage four restrictions in Melbourne. Yes, that's right. So we did uh, we did three weeks of shows where we went live at 7 p.m. every single night. It was also improvised, so when people they checked the show out... Uh, Explained improvisation. It was, yeah. God. See, it was different every time. I didn't know it was, it was a lot of yes ends. <laughs> Stuff going on. It was fun. It was fun. Um, now, there's three members of the Game Boys comedy team. Uh, this entire show was devised, put together, created via Zoom, and then the actual performances were done remotely as well. So, I was at my home in front of a green screen. Yes, I was in front of mine, down St Kilda, with a green screen. Yes, and our technical director was at his home, putting it all together on his computer his and putting us into the digital oh. studios of GB24. But what we've done is, tonight for you, we've put together our highlights, some of the best bits, out of the whole three weeks of performance, we've managed to scrape together 50-something <laughs> acceptable minutes of uh, what we call comedy uh, for you guys to sit back and enjoy watching. So, uh, bon appetit. Live from the Game Boy Studios, nightly at 7 p.m., this is GB24. Hello, yes, and welcome to this, the very special first opening night of Fringe Festival on this, the 12th of November, 2020. My name is Joshua Porter. With me, as always, is my brother here in the GB24 studios. Aiden, how are you? I'm very well, thank you. Josh. Very well indeed. You're looking a little off colour yourself, Josh. <laughs> Yes, look I look very out. different. It's almost as if we have to change from a good quality camera to a web camera at the last minute, isn't it? <laughs> Typical us. <laughs> or you've yes. just got some jaundice. And I'm very excited to talk to this person. I don't know who it is, but let me tell you, they're a great celebrity and uh, going to be a lot of fun to chat with, I presume. Uh, so we'll just see if our guest is there. Uh, very special guest. Are you there? Hey, Josh, how are you going? <laughs> I'm very good. How are you? You've caught me at poolside, Josh, of my big mansion. Poolside in your mansion. Okay. This is, this is my actual mansion. <laughs> is it? Wow. Yeah. Right. Okay. That's, that's, uh, that's exciting. Obviously, you must be very rich then. Oh, uh, yeah. I've, I've done well with my money, Josh. Yeah, do you, but presumably a Hollywood, big Hollywood actor, of course. You know, Correct. You've been I, a lot I, of money. I've done more films over more decades than nearly anyone, Josh. Yeah. In you fact, I, in going fact, a bit Owen Wilson there. Uh, Owen Wilson, he's just a, he's just a young pup. That's not right at all, Josh. In I fact, know. Josh, I was a shining star to mm. all my movies. But I've, mm. I've called you today because I'm announcing my retirement, Josh. Oh no! Big retirement from you. Have you got, have you got any coveted uh, props from your career? Perhaps a very long pistol. Maybe you've got one of them oh, around. Oh, Josh! Yeah, I've got a lot of that, Josh. Yes. In fact, I, I I think I I don't think I'm going to tell you uh, the truth about why I'm retiring, Josh. Okay. You so you're going to tell me, Jack? You're not going to no, tell me no. anything. I'm not going to tell you the truth because I don't think you can handle the truth, <laughs> Josh, about my retirement. <laughs> Josh, well, I don't think you can handle I, it. Man. I don't think I can. Well, you're out of order, Mr. No, Jack No, you're out of order. Mr. Jack Nicholson, you are out of order. That's okay? correct. And, you uh, really got that one. I'm going to go back to the studio. And you know who's waiting in the studio? A Hang on, Josh, before you go, Sorry? I just got a couple little things I want to say. <laughs> Josh, I, spent a, I spent a lot of time writing these <laughs> because I wanted to say that I'm retiring because it, it, this is as good as it gets. <laughs> <laughs> Something had got to give. So I just decided to depart. Ed, time for my bucket list. Yes, there we go. Bucket yeah. list, right? Well, I'm going to head on back to the studio with a few good men. <laughs> There you go. Glad uh, I let that run a bit. I got it quite early, I'll tell you that. <laughs> um, now it's time to head over to the uh, GB24 traffic jet uh, to give you all the latest traffic news, giving for that drive home. Are you there, Goose? Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah, I'm here, Josh. Um, I don't know. I don't know why we uh, had to get rid of the chopper, but um, 
I suppose things are moving faster and quicker here. <laughs> um, the G-forces are definitely um, not what I'm used to, but um, yeah, well, I'll be giving you the, the all the traffic reports later on in the night. <laughs> Okay, might uh, leave Goose there. Hopefully, uh, get that traffic update for you a bit later on. You're with GB24. This week, we decided to take things um, a little bit more serious. Yahoo serious. <laughs> yes, that's right. We're talking Yahoo serious today. Born Greg Gomez. Yes, that's right, Greg Gomez. He shot to fame in 1988, in the late 80s, early 90s, with a string of films. I won't say hit films, I'll just say <laughs> um, Absolutely amazing. And then what happened? He just vanished. <laughs> oh, that's very – oh, we didn't even rehearse that. That was very good. <laughs> very good. Uh, yes, that's right. So let's hear a little bit more about Mr. Sirius. Josh, what do you know about him, first of all? Yahoo Sirius. I, I – so – I, I remember the was it young young Ned Kelly yeah, there was a Ned Kelly film there's an Einstein film you're getting a few mixed up there we'll start with his first hit uh, young, Einstein. young Einstein now young Einstein was 1988 where he he actually he wrote uh, he co-wrote he produced he directed and he starred in young Einstein yes wow. that's right that's what shot him up to fame he also had a couple of oh do you know the plot of young Einstein by the way uh, no, I remember, all I remember is like vague scenes of him with weird inventions. It's, about it's, my it's, it's the intentionally inaccurate historical retelling of what if um, young Albert Einstein had lived in Tasmania <laughs> and uh, he, come out with, he came out with E equals MC squared when he, he cut in half the beer atom to make bubbles in beer. So that, that's how that right. goes. And for, and for some reason, he also invented rock and roll. Well, he asked the big question. And then he also had two other films. He had, um, in 2000, he had Mr. Accident. It's Mr. Accident, oh, the world's yes. most accidentally <laughs> done man. I don't know. Accident, accident, pro? accident Pro? Definitely look into an Accident Pro. Accident right, pro. Right, right. Reckless Kelly is his, uh, Reckless his, Kelly. his other film they did, which is, of course, the story about uh, a, a long lost relative of Ned Kelly. Um, both uh, Mr. Accident and Reckless Kelly uh, performed poorly. <laughs> <laughs> so, because that was, it's a character, right? Like, so did he do appearances and stuff as Yahoo Serious or was it just in these No, 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 mate. No, no, no. I'm glad you brought that up because um, Greg, as he was known, um, he was always wanting to, to rename himself. Um, originally, this is interesting. This is a quote from him. So he wanted to, first of all, change his name to just a simple barcode. So he wanted to have a barcode as his name, which wasn't allowed. But I'll tell you this, this is a quote. So he said, I decided to collide to powerfully opposing words to create an oxymoron encompassing the two sides of my personality. Shouldn't everyone want to do that? So Mr. Mr. Serious, Mr. Yahoo Serious. Oh, wow. So um, he's, he's thought a lot about that name, hasn't oh, he? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Mr. Yeah. Thomas, Mr. Thomas. Uh, yes, I was Dickie. just thinking this Yahoo Serious sounds pretentious and wants this given name as a barcode. Sounds like a precursor to Elon Musk. <laughs> hey, that's a very good point. Very good point. Maybe... Please take the comedy stylings of Mr. Dickie D. <laughs> In 2000, uh, Yahoo series, he tried to sue the search engine Yahoo of <laughs> for trade infringement. <laughs> um, Josh, how do you think that court case went? Struck, Struck out. Again. Struck out. The judge went, Correct. get you and your barcode, get out of here. So finally, the most up-to-date information I could find on him was in July 2020, um, Mr. Sirius was evicted from his Sydney rental property uh, after he couldn't pay the $15,000 in rent um, to his landlords. Sirius stated that he was unable to pay this due to impact of COVID-19, but this was unsubstantiated <laughs> in the court. It's time to check back in on the traffic jet. Oh, yes. um, obviously, there's probably some congestion on the road uh, at this stage, I think. Yeah, um, it's, always, it's always a possibility. So hopefully we can get a single shot of me would be great. Um, <laughs> but no particular reason. No particular reason at all. Um, but I think we might uh, be checking in with Goose, who's up in the GB24 traffic jet. Goose, are you there? Whoa. Oh, yeah, Josh, thanks, mate. Yeah, yeah, I've managed to get up to... Um, uh, okay, yeah, we've got a... See, we've got a, these G-forces, mate. Um, we've got this... We've got Burke Street coming up. Um, yes, and if the traffic report... Oh, there. No, I've just missed Burke Street. Um, in fact, hey. if you're on Burke Street, just watch out. There may be some vomit coming down there. Um, in fact, I think we're up to... Oh, no, we've just passed... But, oh, 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 o
Uh, ah, well, uh, uh, I might leave it there. Uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> we'll just cut uh, Goose's audio uh, as well. Which is great. Cut the audio uh, tape. <laughs> we can scrap uh, that. We can scrap that. Hello, Ooh. dear governor. How are you going? Tremendous. How are you? I'm great. Now, Betty, uh, with an arts grant, what would you spend the money on? Oh, I'd buy some more biscuits and I'd probably uh, get some more wool so I could do some more knitting and some more crochet. Great. Well, that sounds like a very good cause. So why don't we start searching the halls of Trades Hall and try and find that uh, arts grant? Okay, let's go, Betty. Oh, terrific. On the interwebs. Okay, here we go. Going into Trades Hall. All okay, right, hallway ahead of us. Uh, sh oh, should we go straight ahead? It's lovely carpet. Yes, let's go straight ahead. Okay, fire, coming, fire. coming up oh, to the fire. first intersection here. All yes. right, so we've got a bit of a choice. We can go left in the hallway, we can go right down the hallway, or straight ahead through that door. Ooh, let's go straight ahead. Okay, straight ahead through that yeah, door. Yes, we'll see yes. what we find. There's light at the end of the tunnel. Okay, oh, here yeah. we go. <laughs> <laughs> welcome, Ooh. Betty. Welcome. Hello. How goes it this fine evening? I am the evil wizard, the holder of the grants. Oh, you're an evil wizard. It's lovely to meet you. Oh, well, it's great to meet you as well, Betty. No one's ever asked how I am, you know? It's Hello. always, uh, evil wizard. It's lovely to have someone with a little bit of a rapport. Yeah, and do you know what your biscuit is, dear? Uh, no, um, I've, we don't really have time for that. <laughs> <but>. <laughs> I've been brought you in a biscuit house and have a time here. That's perfectly fine. You're very evil, aren't you? I am very evil. Maybe a Kingston, you know, the evilest oh, no, of biscuits. No, 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 no. Oh, okay. Kingston, no. Oh, well, okay. Well, I'll, I'll keep doing it. Maybe a chocolate teddy bear. Oh, yes. Maybe something like that. No, a Kingston far too sensible. Oh, okay. Okay, well, you've asked a lot of questions of me. Why don't I ask a question of you to see if you can win this grant or mm -hmm. help you on your way? I've got a riddle for you. Okay, yeah. Betty, ready? The riddle is, if you don't keep me, I will break. What am I? If you don't keep me, I will break. I am an egg. No, no, because you, you... No, you can keep... Uh, uh, okay, I'll give it to you. It was a promise, but Betty, I like your style. Yes, um, Pete Evans has just hit Facebook again. Another social media post. He's posted a Facebook message that simply says, I fucking hate Jews. I mean, it's really something we've come to expect from... What? Sorry, I fucking hate Jews. Uh, yes, sorry about that. A bit of a mix up there. Yep. Uh, anyway, moving on. Josh will be reporting live from a location he knows nothing about. He won't be able to see it or anything. And let's see if he can actually figure out where he is. And Josh, are you there? Yes, Eden, I am here. I'm very excited to be down here. Uh, very excited people around me are all having it's, a great time. Well, it, of course, it's such a happy day, isn't it? It is. It, some some call it the happiest of days. Um, you know, some people think the Happy Days show from the about the group in the fifties was the happiest. But no, it's it's right here where I am uh, yeah, in in well, America. Happy days, is, happy days is good. Well, it's, it's Happy Days was set in America, but not not necessarily where you are, of course, today. Yeah, exactly. I was just <laughs> but it is, to it happy is days. bringing is bringing the nation together, isn't it? The event. Yes, the, the, the happiness of this day and this uh, big Macy's, well, it's not the Macy's Day Parade. That's, I'm sorry, my brain's stuck in America for some reason. Of course, Get I'm, out of I, America. I, should, I should be over in Europe, really, shouldn't I? Yes, you should be, very much. Because in fact, it is, it's so popular. I think nearly, nearly 2 billion people, 2 billion people saw it. 2 billion people saw it. You're right, a lot of eyeballs on this happy event. Um, yes. uh, it's, soccer's, soccer's pretty great. Um, you know that that's all. That's also really good. Did you get uh, in any? Did you get in any? Um, did you get any of the photos in the background? Maybe. Did I get in any of the photo? Uh, photo bomb. Yeah, like I I love photo bombing. You know, uh, so with the couple there, did you photo bomb behind or anything? Oh well, of course. Any any wedding, you need to yes. be there for the photos, uh, especially yes. a royal wedding. I mean, yes. it's very important uh, to be back there. Uh, at the royal wedding, so uh, everyone's very happy, very excited. They really love a royal wedding over here. People can't well, get not, enough. Not everyone, Josh. What, what do you think grandma's thoughts were? Grandma's thoughts are oh, not happy. 
No, nah, but, but put correct. it on put it on a spoon. That's what they do over there, is it? Put it on a spoon, put it on a plate, and sell it to you for five pounds. Hello and welcome to this very special show, this very spooky show on this Friday the 13th of November 2020. My name is Joshua Porter. With me, as always, is my brother, Eden. Eden, how are you? I'm great, Josh. Here celebrating Friday the 13th in our spooky, spooky costumes that we both agreed to be wearing when we went live on air. Isn't that oh, right? Very busy, Eden. I look, when you said you were going to go Harley Quinn, I thought you were joking. <laughs> Never joke. I did mate. You would actually dress up as Harley Quinn, so mate, I you know apologize. me. You know me. I'm Daddy's little monster. You know. <laughs> so, Madam Butterfly, are you there? Madam Butterfly. Yes. Yes, I'm here. Oh, I'm here. yeah. Fantastic. Yeah. There you oh, go. It's very difficult. It's very low quality on mine. It's very hard to see where my mouth is. My frame rate is shocking. Um, <laughs> I can't. I might <laughs> see what I can do because I've completely <laughs> lost my mouth. Madam Butterfly. Oh, there you there. Yes. Oh, here there you go. go. There yeah. you go. Me. Now, me, Madam Butterfly. Butterfly. Fantastic. Thank you for being here with us. Um, now, Madam Butterfly, um, yes. what do you see in our future? Oh, look, I know my lips look a bit blue. I've just been in the pool <laughs> for a long time. <laughs> uh, but I do see some very exciting things in your future. I see three very special gifts. I oh. see one of frankincense. Yes. I see one of myrrh. Okay. And I see one of gold, gold, gold for Susie. <laughs> That's good. Um, now, can I ask you, Madam Butterfly, do you see any more technical issues in our future? Oh, lots of those. I tell oh, you what, right. by the way we're going tonight. Plenty of those, but yeah, that's what happens when you're doing it live. That's what yes. happens when you're going out live. Mate, we'll do it live. live. Fuck it. Do it live. <laughs> yes, man. Thank you, Bill. Um, now, Ben and Butterfly, do you have anything else yes. you want to plug? Uh, yes, I've just opened a new brothel called Madam Butterfly. Oh, okay, I think we've. Uh... Yeah. We are very excited to have our special guest with us uh, right now. He's our brand new mime correspondent. That's right, it's Patrick Collins. I believe we have him on the line. Pat. Ah, yes. Hello, Pat. Hello. Thank you so much for coming in with our, uh, being a brand new mime correspondent. Now, we'd like to ask you straight away, can you tell us, or actually, can you show us what it's like to be a mime correspondent? Absolutely, boys. And first of all, thank you so much for having me here today. Being a mime correspondent really is a job that I have undertaken thoroughly, confidently, and with the utmost gusto that you should expect from a modern day mime correspondent. Okay, thank, thanks, uh, thanks, uh, Pat. There, um, I was, I was, I just wanted you to ask you another question, just about sometimes as as a mime, you get uh, you get pigeonholed, you get mm -hmm. sort of put in a box as a mime. You know, that's the only roles you can get. I wonder if uh, that's how you feel sometimes. Absolutely, that is certainly a relatable analogy that you've just laid out there, Eden. Um, uh, you can find that being a mime can uh, restrict you. You can find yourself placed within, uh, uh, how would I describe it? Um, uh, yes, walls, or like a box, if you will. I think I would find that to be an accurate statement you have okay, mentioned. Okay, great. Josh? Well, Pat, obviously, you know, being in amongst those other journalists, it's obviously a bit of push and pull uh, to get those stories off them. A bit of, bit of a tug of war, isn't it, to try and get those stories off the other journalists? Oh, absolutely. I remember uh, just this afternoon, a, a Tennessee man was exonerated from jail for a uh, after 15 years that he spent in jail for a crime that he did not uh, commit. And uh, I broke the story. And... Uh, that's that's great. Yeah. Um, okay. Well, look, yep. speaking, speaking with the US, I guess um, maybe could you tell us, obviously, yeah, what's going on with the US election? Do you think Trump's going to concede anytime soon? Look, uh, I tell you what, Trump's really putting up walls, boys. Oh! He's really putting up some walls. No idea what he's up to. <laughs> it's what you've all been waiting for, guys. It's the big GB Eats giveaway. Call in now. Oh, yes. The number on your screen, if you call in, you can get through to the live number, the live phone right now. The GB24 phone lines are open for this big GB Eats giveaway. Isn't that right, Aiden? Yes, it is. Um, we've got our GB uh, GB Eats bag of goodies here. Um, yes, we've got the, the GB Official Eats shapes. Um, it is part of our um, our myriad of uh, corporate family structure there. You can see from theme parks yes. all the way over to... Uh, to the McKay of Taco. Yes. Uh, uh, and that phone number, number guys. This is on the line. 
The phone number is 0403 416 824. Call now. Or if you're yes. more partial to alphanumeric, Aiden, what should they call? Yes, if you do, if you if you like words instead of numbers, I believe that's what that means. Um, there's still some numbers in it. It's 0403 41. Ouch. Yes, it's the only uh, word we oh, could make. Someone's um, oh, coming in. We've got a call. We've got a call. We've got a call. We've got Here a call. We go. This is great. Uh, hello, this is Josh. You're on the air. Hello, this is Lou. Hello, everyone. Lou. Lou. Yes. Hello. Thanks for calling through, Lou. Are you having a good time? Are you enjoying the show? I'm having a great time. I uh, particularly enjoyed the uh, Trades Hall adventure. It's always an adventure going in there, so what a treat. <laughs> it is excellent. All right, Lou. Well, to win the GB Eats giveaway, we've got a question for you. Who was our guest tonight? Oh, it was the inimitable mime, Patrick Collins. Patrick oh, Collins, oh, that yes. is correct. Hello and welcome to this very relaxing GB24 Sunday session on this Sunday, the 15th of November, 2020. Now, the GB24 Sunday sesh, it's the GB24 you know and love. Just a little bit more relaxed. Now, I don't know whether I want the pizza or the pasta. Thanks for that uh, insight into the weather there, Josh. Mm. Very good. You're now it's time. <laughs> no, I love it. Don't, no, don't get me wrong. I, it, that I'm worked. Getting you wrong. I, I enjoyed that segment. I thought it was no, great. I'm you sure. know who I think loved it? I think Richard E. Grant really oh, loved did it. He, did yeah, he's he mystic. I shouted. I shouted. I fist pumped the air. <laughs> he's very excited. I don't know. I, I don't think. I stood and cheered it. He well, I don't speak. think uh, Harry Connick Jr. What did he think of it? What did what did he he think of your weather segment that you wanted to do? Yes, yeah. oh, 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 Harry, Harry Connick. Harry. Harry the same boat. Now tonight we're going to continue our expose, looking at Australia's dodgiest housemate. That's right. Tonight our intrepid reporter Joshua, who's been banging on the streets, knocking on doors, asking names. He's really trying to get to the bottom of these housemates who couldn't care less. Couldn't care less. Perhaps Josh, our reporter, will find out tonight. Uh, Josh, are you there? Yes, uh, thank you, Aidan. I'm here in my house, once again on the search for Australia's dodgiest housemate. Uh, now, his indiscretions this time. I've been trying to get cups and mugs. Mm. There's none left in the kitchen. They're not dirty. They're not in the sink. They're not clean. They must be being hoarded in his room. This is a very common occurrence. So we'll see if we can confront him now. We'll just see if he's home. Yeah. Mr. Pisasale. Don't Pisa take Sale. no Pisa Mr. Pisasale. Mr. Pisasale. Are you there? Here, here he is. Here he is. There we go. There he now, is. Now, I'd like to know, Mr. Pisasale, I'll put it to you that you have been keeping <laughs> plates and mugs in this room as evidence there, as Where evidence over here as Where well. I think, Mr. Pisasale. There's some more. Now, what, what, what is it? Why are you not taking these dishes back to the kitchen? I'm forgetful, Josh. You're forgetful. I am. Uh, that's, that's, that's all I've got. Because there's not that many. There's only four, yeah. four cups. And we've only got <laughs> four. Some cups. We've only got four cups in this house. The kind of disgusting behaviour I would expect to happen from Australia's dodgiest housemate back to you in the studio. You've heard of Sunrise and Koshy's Cash Cow. Well, here at GB24, we have our own barnyard moneymaker. That's right. It's time for the GB24 Wealth Swine. <laughs> yes, it's time to give away some money. <laughs> Bit of cold, hard cash. <laughs> let's, let's give it away. <laughs> All right. Yeah, so, uh, so we... we <laughs> Okay, okay. For your chance, for your chance to okay. it. There is insanity in the control room tonight. Um, for your There's insanity in the control room tonight. <laughs> Tell me about it, Josh. Tell me about it. For your chance to win tonight, call in on the GB24 burner phone. The line is open for the whole season. 0403 416 824 for your chance to win. Call in now. Oh, they have to. Oh, here yeah. we go. Oh. Okay, here we go. Uh, hello, GB24. Who am I talking to? Amanda. Amanda. How are you going? Now, Amanda, I can hear your radio in the background. <laughs> can you just can you just turn that down for us? My radio. Can you please just turn that down for us? Because we've got a bit of a delay on the live stream, so we'll get a bit of feedback. Yes, I've muted that now. Wonderful. Thank you. Uh, now, who am I? Who am I talking with? Sorry. Amanda. Amanda, right? Are you ready? 
to win some money with the wealth swine. Oh, oh, I hope the wealth swine brings me some good luck. Yes. That'd okay. Be great. Well, all you need to do to win the wealth swine money is tell us what is tonight's code word. We told you at the start of the show. What is the code word? Oh, the code word. I think it it might have been some sort of uh, it was either a dessert or a dance, but <gasps> maybe it was uh, uh, macarena. Yes. Yes. That is it. You have won the Wellswine jackpot, which tonight is worth three dollars and seven cents. Oh. Yes, we'll be sending that to you live. That's really a cup of coffee. It's massive. <laughs> now, now, Amanda, oh, there is a twist here. You can you can walk home with that. That money is yours. That's in your pot. That's that'll be coming to you via pay ID. We can send that through, or you could risk it all for the mystery trough. The mystery trough. Yes. Happening. There's something underneath in the mystery trough. Do you want to hang on to three dollars and seven, or go for the mystery trough? What'll it be? Oh, look, that nearly cup of coffee is tempting, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna go the trough. Oh, We're she's gonna go going to go the, the mystery trough, trough. Ladies and gentlemen. She's going okay. the trough. Reveal I reveal the mystery trough. trough, and it is minimum chips from yeah. Freddy's, from Freddy's <laughs> on Nicholson Street. We've got some minimum chips, which is actually worth. It's only worth three dollars. So you've lost out there, Amanda. Unfortunately. <laughs> Now, it is the end of week one, Eden, yes, here at DB24. We've had a, a lovely time so far. So we thought it was best to take a look back at some of our favourite moments from the week that was. Yes, we've had highs, we've had lows, we've had tech because catastrophes, we've had tech successes. A cash so, uh, let's have a look. Oh, here we are taking a look back. About 40 seconds ago. Now, these were some great moments. On, I think our most trough. recent work. Now, quickly, we are today. having a bit of a long show. Yeah, we're having a lot of fun. We're having almost too much fun tonight. Some will say there's a We're going to have too much fun here. Realistically, we are just going to have a quick. Now, it is the end of week one, Eden. This is the end of week 24. We are just introducing ourselves, looking back. I think there was some really stellar work from you, Eden. Good little head wobble there. Yes, we've had highs, we've had lows. Highs, we've had lows. Very animated. That's what I love to see. That's what I love. Really and here we are, oh, looking look back, here we are, looking back. back. So about this is when we really go. Now, these are some great moments. On the um, all right, well, we're going to take a quick break, um, but stay with us. Um, coming up the break, a reminder, there is the murder mystery ongoing this season of GB24. There might be a little bit of a clue in the second half, so keep your eyes peeled for that. Otherwise, quick message, stay with us. What's that controller? We start with the finest chips, smother them in rich gravy, pop that on some of our tasty chicken, inside a taco, get that in between two burger buns, put that on a pizza, wrap it up like a souvlaki, here comes the salad, what about nuggets? Jesus Christ! And all that can only be served in a bucket. We call it the Whopping Big Chicky Nugget McBucket, but we think you're gonna call it delicious. Mm. What's that controller? It's Pikachu! It is just so delicious. I can't get enough. Oh, yum, yum, yum. Get it in your tum before it gives you diabetes. That's right. McKay of Taco King there. One of the uh, the many family members of our corporate dynasty. That's right. It's mm. all in uh, everything. Oh, that bloody ma there's a bloody magpie. God. Oh, lucky we've got these buckets. They uh, make good magpie protectors. Oh, Bloody hell! Magpie, this magpie, mate. We've got to get someone in to I get think rid you of got that in magpie, on the saying. on the the few days we had off. I think someone left one of the doors open and Absolutely so just flying okay. around the studio. Hopefully, he doesn't come back and annoy us later on. Yes. <laughs> 
Yes, and the mystery sound, if you've been familiar with commercial radio in the last 30 odd years, you'll be familiar with this. We're gonna play you a sound and you gotta guess what it is. So jump in the live chat, get your guesses in. Uh, can we please have the mystery sound? <laughs> I'd say that almost sounds like our tech with a whisk or something. <laughs> Okay, that's interesting. I was thinking, I was thinking it sounds like a wet dog that's got out of a bath and it's that's its paws like clicking on the ground oh. and it's dripping a bit of water as well. That's quite good. Yeah, some sort of uh, pet nails on on jump tiles. In, jump in the chat. Jump in the chat, everyone. Um, see, let's have a look what the so, chat's saying. I, mean, I think it's definitely, I, I don't know, I think it sounds like a scrapey kind of thing. I think you're right, like something on tiles. I was thinking like a, a whisk or like a riping something up off a bench or something, some metal on some tile or some marble or something oh, like that. Oh, Mu Mustard Face says it could be Maya scraping for content from the bottom <laughs> to come up with that. Um, also, a, a washing dishes is another good one. Uh, let, let's let's just check it out. What What is it? Reveal the mystery sound. A toilet, a toilet brush. brush. We got... <laughs> oh. I don't on. think that is stock footage. Hang on, is that our producer <laughs> literally <laughs> cleaning his toilet? We did, he, he did tell us he'd been struggling <laughs> to think of mystery sounds. And I think that proves it. Mustard face got it. Cleaning a toilet. Oh, Cleaning a toilet. Mustard face. There's a big coronavirus outbreak of press conferences. Um, now, obviously, there's a press conference going on all over the country about this. Uh, and we believe that Dan Andrews is actually having one right now. We'll take you there. Right, folks, uh, everyone right to go? All right. Uh, now, there are currently nine active coronavirus press conferences active in the country. Uh, that's an increase of eight from yesterday. Uh, and we do want everyone to take extreme positions and uh, try and watch as many of these press conferences. Of course, we've got GB. Hello. We've... Hello, I'm here. Oh. Uh, magpie oh. Hunter, somebody ordered to remove the magpie. Yes, uh, yes. We did. I am best magpie hunter in all of Russia. That was quick. <laughs> okay. Oh, <laughs> look, you guys. He's went that way. Quick. Be like Do that I way. Not here. I'm, oh, I am quiet as mouse. Let me okay, get just, it. Please, there just it get, you're in the oh. shot. Just get out of the shot. Oh. We're trying to do oh. a show. Oh. Live oh. Oh. He's a tricky one. Oh. He's very tricky. <laughs> this magpie. Okay, thanks, Magpie Hunter. Looks a bit like Dicky D there, Magpie Hunter. <laughs> That's a little bit. Dicky, Dicky he just dad. ducked out of it. Well spotted. <laughs> Crossfire is where we take on the big topics, me and Josh versus each other. Today's topic is what was Australia's favourite lunch snack? Was it roll-ups or the snacks? That's what we're going to talk about lunch today. Box, lunch box, key fact, Aiden. What did I say? Lunch. Oh, well, put it in a box. Call it a lunch box. There you go. Um, you got to get it in that little box, don't you? Um, got to get it in my, the box. Yeah, well, mine was a little blue one i remember with the pokemon yeah and it had the little space for the tetra thing in the, in the yes middle. yes i wonder yes. if there's been innovation since we were in primary school anyway i don't know, I don't I don't know. know. back to it i'm going to start i'm going to be covering the snack and you're going to be looking at roll up so let's start the opening salvo i'm going to release a bit of facts on you the snack joshua yes mm -hmm. absolutely amazing it's spelt S-N-A-K. Not a lot of people mm -hmm. know that. There it is. They're totally the same. It's made I always thought there was cheese. a C in there. There's not. You'd be wrong. There's uh, cheese in there, which is a good form of uh, calcium, I think. There's plenty of that. And then it I peels think... away. And one serving is one serving. So it's none of this tricky, like, I can't figure it out. Um, we also had four flavors. So tasty cheese, cheddar cheese, nacho cheese, and, of course, my favorite, French onion. <laughs> what do you say to that? Well, my opening salvo... Uh... Roll-ups uh, came into existence in 1983. Um, perfect for the lunchbox, right? They're individually wrapped. So you've got them there. It's very simple. Pull them out. And the thing is, great energy for the kids. Full of sugar. And what do kids need getting through the day? Energy. And so that's what you need. So it's very exciting. Kids absolutely love them. In fact, the main ingredient is sugar <laughs> with five different types of sugar. <laughs> So kids will be eating these <laughs> rapidly, Eden. Okay, okay, that's good. Um, well, I'll, I'll take that. I'll take that on board, and I'll hit you back with another Le snack fact. Could you buy roll-ups in thirty-six variety mega pack boxes? Can you do that? I think I saw a picture when I was looking at like seventy-two. Do we have so the picture? So. Do we have? Do we have the picture? There it is. Oh, 36 man. Pack. Now coming up next on the show. 
It's time for Ask Kel. That's right. We've got Kelly Mack with us all the way from Queensland, and she is our number one numero uno celebrity insider. So there's lots of things that we want to ask her and talk about. So let's bring her in on the call now. Kel, are you there? Lovely to be here, boys. <laughs> well, it is great to see your smiling face. Tell us, tell us, uh, where are you at the moment? What, what are you up to? Well, I'm in hospital, sweet peas. Yes, this is a hospital room, you know, 50 shades of beige. This is a hospital armband. Oh. And I'm here. I'm going to give you a little exclusive. I'm here for a bit of liposuction, a little bit of a tuck, a little bit of a nip, because you may not know, but I was surrogate for the Hemsworthy <laughs> twins, Chris Hemsworth and Elsa Pataki. Oh. And unfortunately, yes, yes, I know. They kept us allegedly. all under wraps. So allegedly. You'll keep it strictly on trying to. Allegedly, allegedly apparently. Allegedly. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You should see my perineum, which Chris did <laughs> help me with. He was, he would, every night he would bring me cold pressed macadamia oh. oil to massage my perineum. So I have the stuff that's taint in Brisbane. He's a great, he is, great guy. He is. Oh. The, best, but, the wonderful oh. surrogate father, I'm, I'm told. <laughs> I'm, I'm also told. He, <laughs> well, you know, there was a time when uh, the missionary position does become manslaughter. He's a big boy, and back then I was a little girl. But not anymore, peeps, not anymore. And I committed the cardinal sin, according to those Byron Murphy influencer bitches back there, uh, in that I didn't lose the baby weight. Oh, uh, no. So that's... That's what today's so all about. So I've been sentenced to him. Yes, it is. So um, I've just had my tea brought in, some lovely alfalfa salad and skimmed water. I <laughs> can't wait to tuck in. Wonderful. Yeah. Uh, the power of Thor is uh, raging strong there. Um, yeah. Now, we were wondering, uh, Kel, we have heard a, a few little rumours mm. about uh, Prince Andrew. Oh. Mm. Now, there's any, has any veracity oh. to those rumours? Well, let's just all say this is hypothetical, okay? Okay. Uh, we're, we're and loath as I am, <laughs> loath as I am to start off an answer with when I was a younger woman. When I was a younger woman, my peers, their dreams were along the lines of being transported sexually. My dreams tended along the lines of being transported in the first class cabin of a 747, preferably to a Caribbean island and being paid 10,000 US to do it. <laughs> now, in order to get that, if all I had to do was play hide the herringbone sock with a tame tabby cat while his valet waited outside with the morning kippers, who am I to say no? Make of that what you will. Hey, 10,000 US is 10,000 US. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna. If I put 10,000 US, okay, pet, down there in front of you. It would be very hard for you to say no, wouldn't oh, it? Oh, those kippers would be in my mouth. <laughs>
where he's reporting from because it's damn hot out here, but uh, it yeah. looks like he's been a little too chilly for comfort, I think is the old saying goes there. A little too uh, chilly for comfort. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, every episode you make up new phrases. Yeah, the catcher on us, Josh. Wait till right. you see a t-shirt with the comfy upper... What did I say? I don't even know. <laughs> I'll get a t-shirt made though. That's one right there. I don't even know. <laughs> I'll get a t-shirt made. Hi, what's your name today? Edwin. Edwin. Well, uh, hi, Edwin. Thanks for joining me in Shopper's Corner today. Now, Edwin, we go golfing almost every weekend, don't we? Correct. Mm. Next question. And what do you find the most frustrating thing about when we're golfing? Oh, it's those, it's that, it's that big old walk. You're at you're the back nine and you're not, you're nowhere to be found. You're walking all day and you're drinking a little bit of the sauce. And I, by sauce, I mean drinks. I, I drink a lot of tomato sauce when I go, golf. That's my oh. sauce of choice. Um, now, <laughs> Edwin, the thing that I, I always get struggle with is needing to go to the toilet. Isn't it so difficult to do when you're out on the greens? Oh, so difficult when the bladder calls, nature responds usually. And Edwin, and Edwin we have something even better for you today. Oh, it's okay. called the Euro Club. Now, the beauty oh. of the Euro Club is you can take it with you on the golf course. And what you simply do is you unscrew the top, you put it where, and we just pause the video there. Oh. <laughs> Josh, I, I'm just wondering, is it more um, is it more of a, a sheath, like a flashlight for the penis? Do you put it all the way in, or is it more a, sort of a, an angled fire and forget? I, I don't think it's meant to be a pleasurable experience, Ethan. Oh, okay. I don't know how much you enjoy urinating, but it does matter. So this, this is obviously very useful for urinating. How do you think it goes shooting into one? Oh, well, that would be my five iron. <laughs> Big old wood club there. And you can actually unscrew the wood at the bottom, take a shit in it, screw it back up, pop it in. Four. <laughs> we have got a report that we've fixed the temperature gauge problem on our weather. So I know Jack was a little chilly there, but obviously it's, a, it's quite hot today. So I think they've fixed it. Let's cross back to the weather now. <laughs> I don't think we should have uh, Nazis on the payroll of GB24, to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> Talk about a scorcher, Josh. <laughs> we had a little bit of trouble with our studio yesterday. Um, I think we've got some footage of it and how absolutely trashed it was once a, a 10th episode celebration went bad. You can see it there. Oh. It was an absolute oh. nightmare. Oh, but luckily, What's Campari, the... they came to the table. Our knights in shining armor. Can we just look at the studio that they did uh, help us? Look at that, Josh. Absolutely. They, they leapt to the rescue. As the main, as one of the main sponsors of the Fr Fringe Festival, uh, we're so thrilled to have them on board and to come in with the Campari crew, a 24-hour turnaround, and look what they've done oh. to this studio. It's absolutely magnificent, oh. isn't it? And, and Josh, you know, there's nothing there's nothing better than a sip of delicious Campari when you're just about to go live. I know. Yeah. I love I love Campari. It's probably my favourite <laughs> drinks, I reckon. Yeah, and the, yeah, it smells great. Yeah, it does. First off, it's <laughs> off to the Campari mystery sound. What do you think the sound is? Can we hear the Campari mystery sound, please? Oh, okay. Siren. Can we play it again? I reckon it's a very specific siren. I think it yeah. might might be like a submarine uh, nuclear missile launch warning. So you're in a submarine and the nuclear warhead's about to fire and that's what's cranking off. Okay, okay. I'm, I'm going to take your uh, warning sign and I'm going to go from aliens. I think it's oh, the yes. warning sign from aliens. Um, mm. Get in the chat though, post your guesses. But for now it's time to reveal the thing you've yes. all been waiting for, reveal oh. of the mystery sound. Thanks to Campari. Let's just check back in. We've got a, a couple of... Uh, a, Oh, a really high-pitched squeaky door. And you know um, what, Aiden? I'm so happy. During the episode, it came to me. I know exactly what it is. Oh, really? Oh, so we'll read alert. the rest of the guesses. So, like, red alert from the original Star Trek. Yeah, that's red a good alert, one. Yep. Um, uh, a couple of guesses there. Yep, you know what it is? And you're going to kick yourself because you didn't get it. What? It's the McDonald's burger up sound. When there's a when you're in Macca's and it goes, because the new orders come through. Star oh, Trek <laughs> It's both! Wow, congratulations to Avon Cardigan, who oh got guest of the God. Red Alert from original Star Trek. Avon <laughs> Cardigan Star. absolutely nailed that. Red Alert from the original Star Trek. That's that is huge. absolutely amazing you nailed that. 
Give what? that woman a Campari. <laughs> it's time for guess the location. Now, Josh, are you there? Yes, I can hear you, Eden. Thanks so much. And thanks to Campari uh, for having me on location here. I'm having such a wonderful time. Everyone is having so much fun here. Yes, yes. And like obviously, Campari's flown you all the way out there. Yes. Uh, but what are you feeling about this English tradition? Oh, look, you know, I'm a fan of all traditions across the globe. Um, but in, in England, you know, it's, it's very special uh, to be part of the football fraternity and celebrates uh, that that stuff uh, in well, England. They do, of course, love football, mm. but uh, this is obviously a different type of fans, obviously, than football fans. Yes, much different fans. More uh, like old, old, old timey, old festivals. You know, it's been around for a very long time, but people it's, still respect it, don't they? It has been around for a long time, but a lot of people, when they hear about it, they're utterly confused. They don't know what it is. Do you agree? Uh, yes, I mean, some might say, I don't even know what it is. Um, but I think if it's in England, I, I, is it the one with the cheese? Is it the roll, chasing the cheese down the hill? Is that, is that it? Yes! Oh, God! The yes! Gloucestershire. The Gloucestershire cheese rolling! Uh, I cannot believe you got that! I had some great Thank jokes you. about being lactose intolerant and not being able to compete, as well as um, taking it only on your pizza. But uh, no, you've, got, you've ruined all my cheese jokes. <laughs> yes, wow! What a delicious cross! And you know, I just got word, there's a bit of breaking news here. Campari have flown in an extraordinary amount of Campari Ooh. direct to the studio. It's coming direct in, in the newsroom. That is currently filling with Campari. That was on the contract negotiation. It did say that they would have to flood the studio. It, it looks, in fact, yes. In fact, I'm feeling a little bit thirsty after that bottle that I had earlier. Why, why can't I get it up? Oh, there we go. Load up with a bit of Campari in the studio. So this, glad we've got it here. This is mm, delicious. Yes, hello and welcome to this, the final show of GB24 at Fringe 2020 on this, the glorious Sunday, the 29th of November 2020. Now, this has just come out from the uh, Victorian government on Spring Street that they're putting a ban in place for banks' involvement in programs in schools. So live from Spring Street, we have our pre-recorded reporter. Pre-recorded reporter, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. I'm the pre-recorded reporter. Thanks for having me. Thanks for joining us, pre-recorded reporter. Now, is it true that the Dolomites program is going to be banned in Victorian schools? <laughs> Great question. I completely agree. Yes, I guess it's a bit like if McDonald's were to run a class in school on nutrition, isn't it? <laughs> Great question. Well, I completely agree. Now, pre-record reporter, I've got one for you. Um, do you think that we should have recorded more uh, responses? Do you agree with that? <laughs> Great question. I completely agree. Hmm. I think this bit's played out. Maybe we'll just get out now. <laughs> yeah, I think, we yeah, should I think this is done, mate. <laughs> Can we get out? This is it. This is the moment all season long has been building to. That's right. It is the GB24 murder mystery. Yes. Now... We know there's a lot of eagle-eyed people out there. They have picked up the clues. And they're very warm. They're very hot. But a lot of you might have missed them. Isn't that right, That's right, man. Because you know what? We threw in a couple of red herrings. There were people going, mm. oh, it's definitely the cleaner. Or it's definitely the, the, the what was that guy? The magpie hunter we had in. The magpie hunter. <laughs> but we threw in a couple of them. <laughs> the trick six people. people saw that. It was good. <laughs> but there were a lot of people that had some great guesses. What we thought, we actually would put together some of the, the clips that some other people did see. They did spot. Um, so we're going to show you some of the, the clues that we sprinkled along the way. Just Very subtle as well. Yeah, so let's have a look at the GB24 murder mystery now. You can get it, uh, you get a ballpoint pen, stab it in there if you've got um, a blockage, oh. and uh, it's got a tracheotomy. Oh, Absolutely. that's not quite They, though, they leapt that? to the rescue as the main, as one of the main sponsors of the Fringe Festival. Oh, looks like uh, we're so thrilled to have looks them like on board. This, of course, is where we go. Battle a battle with the big questions of the day. Today's big question is... <laughs> I love to well, it's, yeah, I, I agree. It, there's a lot of people here just saying it's perfect for people that get off on pissing in public. Oh, That's great. Uh, <laughs> in Singapore oh. right now, I'm on site. On site on the oh, island Josh, watch that out. kind of found, found along the way. Oh, Josh, Josh, really got caught. We uh, start to get a bit physical with our words, mind you. That's right. It's time for <laughs> Crossfire.
Well, they're, they're, did you pick did them you up? Pick up those did clues? you pick them up? All throughout the series, they were the clues. Well, guys, that's it for the show tonight. It's been an absolute. Pl- oh, what? No. What? Oh. Sorry. Go. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry about that. Um, That was just a bit of a pre-record there. Um, No, but we've had a fantastic show uh, tonight. It's been great. We've had guests. Oh, Um, sorry. See, that was a pre-record, but this is live. This is the real thing. Uh, Absolutely live, 100%. Nothing else going on. Please, I just... Get that back, so that Hey, guys. Yes, this is like... That was another pre-record. Uh, what's behind here, huh? Oh, you see? Another pre-record. We're we still doing there? pre-records. <laughs> but uh, this is actually live. Don't forget that. This one's live. That wasn't live. That was a pre-record. This is live. Well, thanks so much for watching, guys. Uh, we've had great fun on this live show. Uh, we'll be hanging out with you after the show, so make sure you stick around. Um, it'll be great to chat to you guys in the foyer. Hey, guys, uh, sorry, yeah, that was another pre record, but so is this. Show. Very live show. <laughs> Well, wasn't that fantastic? Yes, thanks so much for watching. I uh, hope you enjoyed yourselves. Uh, Excuse no, we- me. Excuse oh. me, ladies and gentlemen. Just had a couple of noise complaints coming of the through uh, the other studios. Want you guys to keep it down in here. Especially no, you t- ladies. Whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> oh, <ugh>. what? <laughs> what? What? Pre record. It's a pre record. Pre record. Pre record. Pre record. Pre record. Sorry, that was just a. One of those damn pre record Well, that's it. Pre-record. Is that it? We're finished. Is that... Oh, mate, I thought there'd be a little bit more comedy in there, but no, evidently not. <laughs> well, there is a little bit more comedy. Oh. Uh, the whole season is up on our YouTube channel. Uh, yes. uh, we're at Game Boys Comedy across all the socials, so you can jump onto our YouTube page and catch every single episode of GB24. Yeah, it was so much fun doing this show. There was heaps of other stuff that you didn't see tonight. Like the GB Eats guys, we actually did deliver the food <laughs> yes. to them. We went um, out there and actually delivered it. Get their fun size Twix and a of Dolmio. I'm sure they appreciated that. <laughs> yeah, give them Dolmio grins. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Uh, and heaps of guests. You, you saw a few of them tonight, but uh, every night we had uh, we had a guest come on and they were so awesome to work with. And a big thanks as well to the team at Melbourne Fringe who managed the mammoth task of putting oh, on yes. a festival during a pandemic. Um, thanks so much for their support for, for helping us produce this show and put this on. Yes, and thank you very much for watching. Uh, but that's it. That's all we've got. So, uh, hooroo from the gurus. <laughs> that's us. Does that work? Does that work? I don't know. Bye.